All right, um, let's see. Let's see if, if we're gonna make weight uh, for Brazil. Oh, if I hadn't told you yet, I'm going to, well, we are going to Brazil. And uh, I hear they have jujitsu there. So we're gonna try out uh, some jujitsu in Brazil. And right now I just got done packing and we're gonna, let's see if we made weight. And there I have all of my business stuff, two geese and two sets of rash guards, which are, you know, lightweight. It's the, the two pairs of geese. So 137.8. And we have 184, 40, 46.2. We made weight by 3.8 pounds since the maximum is 50. <sighs> Didn't even have to dehydrate my luggage or sh cut off the ends of toothbrushes. All right, I'll see you. I'll see you when we get there. So I decided to take a little walk to find the jujitsu place before the actual class begins. That way I can be on time. Uh, so it looks like I just go up in here. It's like a few minutes from my hotel. Yeah. Nice here. Oh, this is a nice little vibe in here. Okay. Sweet. So it's like a five minute walk. It's nice to go ahead that way. I'm not rushing when it's time to come tonight. So I'm gonna go to the corner store and get like two gallons of water. <laughs> So we just got back to the hotel room. Uh, the air conditioner is on, if you hear that in the background. But this, we got a bunch of water. So this is the setup here for the week. We have two days of ghee and then two days of no ghee. We're going to be doing the ghee classes at 7 p.m. And then there's one nogi at 7 p.m. and then one nogi at like 6 a.m. on Friday. So I'm gonna do that before the red eye. But here, all right, so <laughs> it's called Crystal, fitting enough, my name. Um, so if you ever go to the Brazil, this is a water brand by Coca-Cola. I've learned the hard way if you ever go to another country and you get a water that is not standardized um sometimes the water quality like i've been <laughs> when i went to malaysia for three months and i was drinking three months worth of a type of water without good standards i ended up in the hospital with food poisoning so just fyi and the blue bottles are regular water and then these black bottles are whoops <laughs> these black bar bottles are carbonated so that's the difference um all right, I'll see you when it's time for jujitsu. Let's let's go to work. All right, so class starts at 7:30. It's currently 6:30, so it takes me. It took me. It took us like 10 minutes to walk there. And anytime I go to a new place, I like to be 30 minutes early because I might have to sign paperwork. I don't even know if there's going to be somebody there that speaks English. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna head down now. So we're walking to the jiu-jitsu Jiu-Jitsu? 
ain't talking money, don't talk to us. I'm still stacking that guac up. Ball hard to you when I'm locked up. You type just pop up when you grow neck. Huh? Got mine growing like grapevines in the backyard. Come look, bruh. I pull up, hop out, bad, just pop out. Hey, better watch out. Steer around right, that block out. My style's mean to this hostile. And aggressive dog, come check y'all. Spend a couple million, no stress at all. Big bank roll, no checks at all. FYI, I'm fixing y'all. Game A1 professional. You small ball like golf balls. I basketball, go ask bro. Tell her, don't possess me. Every day, bro, she with me. Like Tata, while I Gucci, Louis Strivers, Prada. This is not work like Hello, welcome to the narrated grappling segment. So basically we did um, an hour of class and then after I did an hour of training. Um, so I just condensed it down to the most interesting parts for you. But this is some live sound. So yeah, I cut out the live sound before the music started. Uh, so basically, while training jiu-jitsu in Brazil, obviously, um, well, maybe not so obviously, but in Brazil they speak Portuguese. And so the classes when the instructor would teach was in Portuguese. But jiu-jitsu itself is like a language and if you go there and you already have a really good base of the techniques then it's like the demonstration speaks for itself so for me it was um, nothing that was taught was there are new things that were taught it's almost like you get a technique and it's almost like a sculpture right and you take the sculpture and when you're a white belt you mold into something that like looks you know, like a head and a face, and then as you progress in your skill level, you know, you start to really make the, the, the details and the definition of your sculpture. Um, so today, what we, what we were doing this night was, um, A, we were warming up with a pummeling drill. So basically, here are some tips uh, for pummeling. These are like the key details that you pick up through time. Um, one is the pummeling hand is the hand that's going for the underhook, so going underneath the armpit. And whichever arm is going beneath the armpit, it's very good to step forward with that same leg or else you're going to leave yourself open to get double-legged. Um, so definitely step forward with whatever hand you're pummeling underneath. And then also keeping your hand that's pummeling underneath very close to your chest and flat. That way you can squeeze it in um, because obviously when you're going live, people aren't just going to give you underhooks. And the purpose behind pummeling is if you have double underhooks, that is the best position to be in um, because you have complete control over their torso while you're standing like and who doesn't like full torso control you know what i'm saying my first coach used to joke that you know he's like if you know i like you if i let you hug me and get double underhooks <laughs> so yeah so basically from the like pummel position you can pummel and use this motion not just in standing um, let's say you're trying to let's say pass half guard um, and you might want to pummel their far side arm in order to get the, that far side underhook to help your half guard passing. So anytime, anytime you can get an underhook, I mean, pummel and get and get the underhook. And next, um, what he's going to be showing is an arm drag. Um, 
All right, here are some tips. The technique that I'm doing right now is called a shot. Um, I am setting up the key thing. Oh my God, this is like solid gold for you to get double legs. When I first started doing double legs, my first coach, Jay Jack, told me that when he first started doing double legs and he was trying to do a double leg takedown, he went to his coach and he was like, hey, look, you know, my double legs aren't working. Like I can't get to their legs. And he's like, it's not your double leg that needs work, it's your setup. And that same principle is true throughout all of jujitsu. Sometimes when I'm trying to figure out why I can't get a technique, it's not to sound whatever, but this happened to me a lot at Blue Belt. Um, so basically I didn't really understand the value at beginning of Blue Belt of understanding how to set up things and the value of the setup. I was more focused on the submission. Um, but the key to a good submission and to getting more stuff live is in the setup. And this translates to this exact example of a shot setup. So a shot is when you're shooting in to gain access to the leg. And then a shot setup is what you do right before the shot to shoot into the legs. And often what it is, some things that you can do is basically like a distraction. So if you are an MMA fighter, you can use a jab, jab, cross. You can use a flurry. Um, you can do it. You can shoot in defensively if somebody's punching your face and you're turtling up, you can shoot in um, using that technique. And you can also do a shove shot, uh, which I enjoy doing where you just shove the shoulders back, which is great because it opens up their bottom half because typically when, when people get shoved, they do this motion. So think about that next time that you're rolling is, you know, if you just go for some, it's great to go for stuff, but when you're very obvious, it's very easy to defend obvious things. If you are indirect about it and you're a little sneaky about it and do a setup, that is going to drastically increase your chances of getting any type of jujitsu technique. And for me in my game, as I started to get more and more skilled, it's like you have your flow of techniques that go together and it's like, oh, if that doesn't work, then I move to that. If that gets defended, then I move to that. And you know, you have this like counter game where it doesn't really, you're not focused on getting one technique. You're, for my game is assessing what they're doing and then responding to that, like attacking, being aggressive, but also keeping my mind open and taking what's given to me instead of fighting to make something happen that isn't there. Isn't that like a metaphor for life? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta go with the flow and the ease and things will just, present themselves to you if you're looking for it, like looking for the openings. Um, now this arm drag technique that he's teaching, it's the, a similar arm drag to any other arm drag that, you know, like that I've been taught. Obviously an arm drag is an arm drag is an arm drag. However, there are details that it's like that final five to 10% detail can really elevate your game and makes a technique go from like a 50% um, statistical chance of working to a 90% statistical chance of working. And one detail that he taught to me that really, you know, a nugget of information is during an arm drag, I typically thought of an arm drag as like, okay, I'm gonna drag them, I'm gonna try to get them to me. But the, the trick of an arm drag is it's not just dragging the arm, you're basically gripping their tricep and you're using that as a stop so that you can become faster than them and where you want to get to with this speed delta is to their back. And you're using a step during your, um, during your arm drag in order to get to the back. So before I was more focused on the arm and just dragging the arm and like during the, during the technique, I'd be focused on the arm. But instead of being focused on the arm during the arm drag, focus on their back and that will allow you to get to their back. And then you can set up all sorts of things. You can do all your backside clinch 
takedown. So you could do, you know, a knee trip, you can do a thigh bump. Um, you could do a crotch lift. <laughs> And another key thing um, that he showed me is typically to set up an arm drag. Like let's say I'm trying to see how he's dragging my left arm. And when he's going for my left arm, he's grabbing my left arm with, he's grabbing my left wrist with his left hand first. And notice the timing of that. When I first started doing this technique, and one thing that he corrected me on was I would do it in a sequence pattern of like grab the wrist, then grab the tricep. Um, but it's not like a one, two beat. You're doing both things at the same time. Because if you do it on a one, two beat, like wrist, tricep, wrist, tricep, then they're going to have time to defend the wrist grip. However, if you do both at the same time, like wrist, tricep, then you're already on their back and they haven't even addressed the first grip yet. So that's such a key technique in um, a key detail in the technique. See how quick he does it? And he gets his ear behind, basically try to get to their scap scapula. Yeah, right, that's not just a knife that performs surgery, you know, like, that bone right there. Try to get your ear on their back, period. See, he's explaining to this details to me right now. <laughs> see how see how fast that was, like timing. Yes, like do you see the difference? Like how much harder is that rep to defend than all the other reps that I was previously doing? Um, so everything is just like on that one beat. <laughs> And you see the circling too, so you get to the back. So much better, so much better. So arm drag, wrist tricep grip at the same time, and timing is everything. In the club, got them bottles on replay. Trying to break a record like a DJ. There's 150 bottles in one night. I get it made right. Here we're going for an arm drag to a single leg. Here you have to be careful because typically with single legs, if you're this is a single leg outside, if your head's on the outside, then during a single leg, then you are setting yourself up to get guillotine. So just be aware of that. Um, you can put your, there's a, a technique that you can do called a head switch single where you basically shoulder bump their hip. That way you can get your head on the inside so then your ear is like right up against their belly button. And that's, that's also an escape. Um, if you are getting guillotined and the guillotine is very loose, if you basically just shoulder bump the crap out of their hip, it creates space enough for you to pull your head uh, back. That's if the guillotine is like on 25%. If it's on 100%, there, there are other moves to um, combat that. Side single and 
their arm is trapped on the inside during the arm drag, then they can't guillotine you um, because they would be using that arm to get over your head and look, do you see how my arm that I would be using to guillotine him is on the inside? So I guess, I mean, that answers that. It just gets me nervous though. Keep my head on the outside. So from this arm drag to single leg, um, there, are, there are a bunch of things that you can do off the single leg. From a single leg, you can go up and get a body lock. From a single, you can switch to a double, like you can do other takedowns like he just did. This type of takedown is called a single leg dump. Uh, you have the leg, you have a single leg, you have your head inside. Oh, and <laughs> that's a body lock lift uh, takedown. That's a body lock lift from the rear side clinch. Oh, but he wants me to go from the front side clinch. So the difference is head position. Um, if you have your arms wrapped around their waist and your head is on their back, that's your rear side clinch. If your head is against their shoulder, that is a, a front side clinch. So it's the same movement with your hips. Um, if your head is on their shoulder then and you're in front side clinch, you want to put them on their back. If you're, if you're on your rear side clinch and your ear is to their, their back, then you're doing you know, like a hip hop and you're putting them on their knees or their face, depending on how they fall. I found the key to doing the body lock lift and actually any type, type of takedown, I've been um, training judo now, is hip position and getting your hips under theirs, that way you're loading their weight, their hips onto your hips. That is like the base principle of the majority of takedowns that are like hip hip related. So now we're doing some um, competition training and during competition training we did this uh, for like all of my fight camps and it's really great if, if you're thinking about doing competition um, is to start in negative position so that's why I'm starting here on top and do you see how my near side arm my right arm is posted on his hip um, to, during the transition that is so key because that blocked him from regaining guard. Um, if I could tell you one thing in order to keep like a good side control and to transition to either like north south or on the other side is during the transition put put down your palm and post it right by their hip and use that as almost like you're doing a push up and then that allows you to transition wherever you want to go and it also blocks them from regarding because your hand is by their hip and they can't get their knee past it that once i learned to do that 
that's definitely a money move. And of course, we're out of frame here, but it looks like. <laughs> we are really going at it. See, see this near side hit post right here. All right, so right now I am um, in a half guard, and in a half guard, you either want to get a deep reverse underhook. So right now, <laughs> I'm trying to get higher on his far arm, so basically like slide up to his um, to his tricep because then it they're in a compromised position like if you're on top of somebody and you have your arm pinning theirs and they're like this like that's that's not exactly a like for them it's depowering <laughs> So the significance of this type of training is the people who are on the bottom, those are the people that we're training for competition. Um, the value of training from negatives is, negatives meaning negative positions, is it, it teaches you more of a, like a fighting spirit because if you're fighting from the worst positions, then it can only get better from there. We started from the bottom, now we're here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's good, like sometimes, you know, when I was a blue belt rolling, um, I used to view pos some positions as bad, like, oh no, you know, this person has my back, or oh no. But then as I got more and more experience, I, people would, this is actually the definition of wisdom. Wisdom is when you are is the ability to look at a situation and to have emotions that are good towards it when previously it would have been deemed as ungood. So all emotions are good, but basically it's like, oh my God, like for example, instead of saying, oh my God, they have my back. I need to get out of here quick. I can't believe I'm, I'm here oh my, and panicking versus I've been here before, you know what I mean? It's like wrist control, <clears throat> let me get my hips up, let me drive my head into the back of my head into their face, let them, you know, it's like the, your mind goes to the step by step, um, and then eventually, oh, this is the funny part. So basically like this poor guy has been fighting this whole time and you know we were we were going and I was just I was just setting it up like setting up the choke just getting him in back control <laughs> like I wasn't going to choke him before you know before the round actually started <laughs> but just hearing a grown man screaming no 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 <laughs> I thought that was really cute I thought that was like cute <laughs> he obviously did not want me on his back even during like the rest period. He wasn't he wasn't into the hug. <laughs> oh, so we could start in any position um, that we wanted to. So I asked to start in a back triangle position. Um, so basically a, a a rear triangle position. Um, so so I have his head and arm in a triangle and you're on 
their their back. Um, so that's a rear triangle, and it's pretty much one of the. It's more devastating than um, than a body triangle from the back because you have a back control and you have a choke um, along with back control, along with access to attack and arm lock the arm that's inside your legs and even the arm that's outside your legs. Uh, so try try out a rear triangle. It's um, it's fun for the whole family. I love that pass. We basically just cartwheels over. Here I'm trying to get a single leg to go for a shin to shin. And he basically just goes uh, for a guillotine off my shin to shin. Which is, I mean, it's very direct. I can respect any type of like technique where it's just like savage and you go for it. So, I mean, next time somebody's doing shin to shin, I should just go straight for a guillotine. And by that, I mean, I'm talking to you, Laura. She loves a shin to shin entry into X guard. Here it looks like I've gotten myself into a bit of a triangle and in order to escape a triangle my left arm is on his left inner thigh and then I'm rotating um, towards my left in order to unlock the triangle so that is a triangle choke escape. And I survived. And he asked me, you know, he was like, is that okay? Um, which is nice, you know, when you're grappling. This, oh, that was almost a technical stand up. And I was like, oh, that was a fun round. This was definitely a long night of training. Ooh. And now we are, he's getting a chance to, to start in top position. It's probably a good break for him. So right now he's in side control. He's switching from side control to a a case of katami, which is also called a scarf hold, um, but I'm not letting him get my arm up. And do you see the transition, how I like got my knee in? That is legit such a great way to escape from side control, is just getting your knee in. Here I had the Kimura grip and then use that to roll over my shoulder in order to, uh, from there you can get an arm bar. So I'm working for the arm bar. <laughs> And then after.
after if somebody um, had a submission on the people that were training on the bottom they had to like do push-ups after nice little added <laughs> nice little addition to the workout And if you think the training is done, the training is not yet over. Um, I must have trained like, I was probably at that gym for like three hours between the, um, like the class and training after. So here the principles of passing are get your elbow inside. So do you see how my elbow is inside? His thigh, that is really big. Here, a cross face would have been great, but you can also use head position. So here is a knee slice or a knee cut. Um, head position here is very, is very much key. You want your head on the inside, that way you can use your head to push their head away, and that increases the, and that increases the pressure. Um, and then you have a pummel position here, like we saw in the beginning, where your far side arm is, is underhooked. And once you can get that knee line above, you're pretty much money. And as you can see, I use my foot. You can use your own foot and press it against um, their leg to get, to get out. Here would have been a great Oh, my leg was in between his, that's why I was in a half guard position, but that would have been a great transition to S mount. Them jeans, they fitting like a glove. I had a crush on you since real love. Uh, hold your horses, I'ma show you who the boss is. I'm taking no losses, keeping groups like SWD and TLC. Jesse VIG with telepathy. The recipe, a bitch of hardcore with the gun. Pippin' ain't easy, but it sure is fun. I won, so what's the 4111? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. I got seven Mac 11s, about eight, 38s, 9, 9, 10 Mac 10s, the shit's never end. You can't touch 
my riches. Even if you had MC Hammer and them 357 Biggie Falls, the millionaire, the mansion, the yacht, the two weak spots, the two hot spots. Uh, that's how I got the weed spot. I shot Jed in the head, took the bread and the lamb spread. Little body got the shot into your body, so don't resist. You might miss Christmas. I coat guns, I make number runs. I get them seeds, the runs dripping. When I throw my clip in the AK, I slay from far away. Everybody the All right, this next move is uh, money. This is the over underpass made famous by Bernardo Faria. Uh, so it's technically a half guard pass because you want to get their leg between yours. If you don't, you're just going to dive into a triangle which I've done, <laughs> definitely done before. Um, so now you can see his right leg is between mine. Um, so then, you know, that, that makes it, you're good for the over under pass. And then from the over under pass, I try and get to his leg. And then when you triangle their leg and you drive your hip in, then you have yourself a knee bar off of the over under pass, which is great. It's a great setup because typically they're more focused on posting on your hip to stop the pass and Bernardo used to drop on it, so. So here I'm going for a rolling uh, Kimura and then off the rolling Kimura you can, I went for an arm bar there but he ripped his arm out. Oh, that was a good I'm going for some open guard sweeps. Here, let's see if I can guillotine again. So now I have single leg X. I'm going for a tripod sweep. I'm sorry, that was a sickle sweep. <laughs> uh, that was a double leg. Here he has ankle control. I'm circling my legs out. I have a knee shield, um, so my top leg is shielding and I'm framing and he, that's such a great hip switch to beat the knee shield, uh, typically for a knee shield, oh, right to an, I love that move, I love that, that I do that move all the time, <laughs> that was an arm, um, that was an arm triangle, so I had an arm choke, here I'm doing a, <laughs> a shove shot, and he sprawled to get to um, a side turtle, which then turned into a side control. And right now my goal here is to get to my knees. Um, I'm fighting for a single leg. Uh, I'm fighting for a single leg. I'm fighting to get on my knees because then from here I go for a dog fight position, get my leg over, um, and then you can angle to the back. Here I'm going for a single leg dump and going in for a uh, trying to do a double. Trying, ooh, I got a rear trip. That that combination, a wrestler showed me that double leg to outside trip. That combination works very very well, and it also helps with your courage to shoot in for a double leg because sometimes it feels like you're jumping off a cliff. <laughs> when you're about to shoot in. So it's always great. It's like I found that, especially when I was learning, first learning these moves and first getting these
let's say it, it failed, it's a setup. It's now a setup to do something else. Now that's a setup to do something else. And then pretty soon you have these chained uh, techniques together that and you're forced to be reckoned with. Hail Mary, full of grace. Smack them in the face. Take her Gucci back. And a more face off her back. Jack, what is she at? Funny with the money. Oh, you got me mistaken, honey. I don't want to. I have very good frames. I'm working to... get into a good side control position, which would be getting on the, see where my knee is? It would be best, well, it depends where, where you want to go with this. See that now I'm moving to it. So um, when you have side control, you want their arm to be, you want to, to be inside their, their arm, you want your knee inside their armpit. Um, that's the best type of position for a very controlling side control, like you basically want their torso on your lap. I think we have one more round. It was a long night of training. This is a long... control and then trying to get his head to pin my torso and right now I'm grabbing his arm because wrist control is key and then what I love to do is I love to weave my left arm inside to get the Kimura grip and um, when you have a very strong wrist control it's almost like a game of operation people will pay attention to what they feel is dominant so if I'm squeezing the crap out of his wrist He's going to be thinking more about his wrist than about my other arm weaving in to get the Kimura grip because I wanted the Kimura grip the whole time. So if you're trying to get something, the setup is key, like the misdirection in the setup. So instead of directly going for it, like, oh, I want that Kimura grip, I'm going to go for the Kimura grip, it's given, you've given it away. <laughs> Flirt with it a little. <laughs> misdirection, like grab something and be focused on that thing and they're like oh they want wrist control and they're thinking wrist control and then you can weave um, the arm in especially if you don't touch any other part of their arm they don't even feel it they don't even think about it they don't even see it coming because they're not thinking about it they're just they're thinking about their wrist so that type of principle can be applied to any type of move in jujitsu i mean if you're if we're talking mma strikes are a distraction it's a you're when you're getting punched in the face it's 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 definitely a skill to think about anything else but you're getting punched in the face like you have to like turn that part off and keep on working through the distractions of getting punched in the face so of course the like the skill and the technique has to be there first and then the punches are added see the side control how I'm putting them on my lap like that is a good side control when you're inside oh. 
drops keep falling on my brain. Cause I'm in the trap on flames. So hot, even if it was a change. I don't have no time. I'm insane. I think he just moved us away from the wall. <clears throat> and this is a good technique to get to high mount is to post on their head like this and then shimmy up. And the advantage of high mount is when you're in high mount, you're taking their hips out of the equation, uh, which typically like helps you stay in mount. I went for a collar choke. And then off the collar choke, um, I have a top lock. And this top lock is, if you can get a top lock, you can basically transition into a triangle. Um, getting that top lock is key. And then from the top lock, if you can break their posture, then you have a very good chance of getting a triangle choke. It's not in frame, but I remember getting him in a triangle. And he was yelling at me in Portuguese. I was like, what is this man saying? Is this, is this okay? <laughs> And there I am after, you know, working a full day because <laughs> uh, this was a work trip and then training. I must have been there for a couple of hours at night, so you can imagine like the difference in temperature. Uh, I, I was drinking a lot of water, <laughs> to say the least. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. I have, uh, this was just day one. So I have three days of training. Um, I have some geese stuff too. I, I learned a lot uh, while I was training in Brazil. And thank you, Alliance Jiu Jitsu, for having me uh, in the upcoming videos you'll you'll meet the owner and the owner is like <laughs> I just loved his energy he just seemed just like a bright sunny spirit with the dash of mischievous <laughs> all right so thank you so much for watching and until next time bye Tell you what I ain't. I ain't playing like short, so I ain't. I ain't waiting like start training them. It's twice as hard to get a job to pay them. So I ain't paying attention to what you're saying. Raindrops keep falling on my brain. Cause I'm in the trap on flames. So hot.